this is the uh, a typical foundation wall. <clears throat> you can see uh, this is a kind of a T pattern. <clears throat> Basically, you could change the length of the T. And if you do the center, it's really difficult. So you'd want to move your pivot points to the base. <clears throat> so the base would be the uh, reference point for the T. And as the T goes up and down, it changes in height. Now, it changes at its center point, so it, the pivot point would have to actually move with it um, to get a better result. Second thing, the, um, the width will change, and the footing, and the thickness of the footing itself. And it would change for both the wall and the, and the base. And then you could add a, a bit of corner radius if you wanted to it. <clears throat> But uh, in our case, that uh, won't, be, won't be an issue. These are your pressures. Um, again, with a simple scale, you can scale the vertical. And these soil pressures will change in uh, width. <clears throat> then on this side too, um, they'd have to move according to the base and the, the height of the soil um, in this case. <clears throat> so normally the, the uh, the soils are um, behind a wall. Um, you're going to have that type of configuration, and in front of the wall, you'd have well, this configuration. So your soil pressures would reflect the height of the soil. In this case, um, in front of the retaining uh, wall, this is the uh, the soil you're trying to. Uh, prevent from overturning or collapsing in front of the wall. <clears throat> so these uh, pressures vary um, with the soils and the soil layers. And when you add water to the mix, you can actually um, add um, some complexities there. So, uh, uh, so if your water table is here, it can change that uh, <clears throat> a diagram significantly here. Um, so this is the water table. Um, so these are some scenarios. Um, one thing we can do in uh, 3D is, <clears throat> is we can do a, a morphing scenario too between. Uh, um, so we can take this um, particular. Um, whoops. Uh, this T. Let's move it out here. <clears throat> and that T might change in a different shape. So if we uh, make a copy of that and call this the master, um, master uh, foundation, and this is a, a target. <clears throat> we can change that shape to any shape we want. And, uh, and this here, uh, we add what's called a morpher on it and hit that target. Um, see here. I guess we'll have to make it a 3D object first. It only works with 3D objects. So let's take this here and <clears throat> make sure it's uh, enabled in viewport. And uh, same with this here. Let's make sure this one's enabled in viewport. Here. <clears throat> and then again, this one, let's make sure it's enabled in Newport. And let's just take this and convert it to uh, edible poly. Yes. Do edible poly. So this here, <clears throat> we had a morpher. And then pick this one here from the scene. We can actually morph the shape to another shape. And it's the easiest way to uh, get customized splines. <clears throat> but we can also go in 3D into that. So <clears throat> we can take that to the next level where 
that shape becomes a 3D shape. Um, so you can take this, move it out, <coughs> make a copy of this, add an extrude modifier, <coughs> do the same procedure, just go into 3D for a minute. So that becomes a 3D shape um, that gets moved to another shape. Um, just same routines. A little uh, free example of um, foundation wall principles.